Hey, I'm Roland and welcome to my little YouTube channel. Um, we went to China last week with Huawei and we had a chance to actually get a Moto M. So I guess this is kind of the first unboxing or kind of hands-on video that is not a Chinese dub here on YouTube. And yeah, this is it. This is the Chinese version. It's coming out in the United, St United Emirates. Uh, in a few weeks, it will be the same device, just a different ROM. This still has a Chinese ROM on it. I hope to get the international ROM or the more stock version of Android on here. This has been pretty much modified and using uh, Lenovo's Vibe UI. But let's get into the box. As you can see, you have this color gold in this case. The white silver version wasn't available yet when we went over there. And yeah, if you look around the box, it's pretty much the same as you always expect from Motorola. They have a bunch of specs back here, 5.5 inch, bling bling, gold edition, 8 core, 2.2 gigahertz, Helio P15 in here, and 4 gigs of uh, RAM actually on this device. Down here you get Bluetooth, Dolby Atmos sound, it's running Android 6.0, and it supports LTE up to 300 uh, megabits a second. But I'll tell you more about the specs in a sec. Let's just dive into the box for now. So you get the device in this typical uh, Lenovo or uh, Motorola packaging in this case. Got a bunch more information on here. 16 megapixel camera on the back and an 8 megapixel shooter on the front. Let's put the phone to the side for a second. Dive deeper. This is our receipt from China. And as you can see here, somewhere down here, it's actually 2,000 yuan in China right now. So this works out to just over 290 euros and 290 US dollars is pretty much the same. And this gets you a pretty decently specced mid-range device. This is the charger. It's a 2 amp charger. So they call it quick charge, but basically it's just your average 10 watt charger as usual using USB right there. This is the USB type C cable right here. So as you can see, it's got the reversible plug on it. And further down in the box, there's a bunch of stuff. So these are just the quick start guides and the typical paperwork. Let me work my way through here. So we have the SIM card tray pick and in China, you also get a cover foil for the Moto M in this case. Yeah, that's pretty much it in the box. There is a special deal they have down there in China right now where you would also get um, a bunch of headphones from Motorola with the device, but in my case, we didn't manage to actually score the promotional uh, stuff. Let's get the device out of its cover foil, and as you can see on the back, it's a full metal unibody design basically, but I'll show you that in one second. I have already set this up, been playing around with it, a tiny bit let me just quickly unlock this right here so there you go there we have the Android that's running on here um, as you can see from the sides here if you look closely you'll notice this has this 2.5 D cover glass on here as is nowadays pretty much common on most devices it has a 5.5 inch IPS panel in here that's running at 1080p so that's 1920 by 1080 pixels in this case there are no capacitive buttons on the front, which is typical or not very not very common in Chinese phones. They're using the on-screen buttons right here. Down here we have the pretty prominent Moto logo on this device, although it is made by Lenovo in China. Up top you get the front-facing speaker, and right to next to that is the um, brightness sensor and distance sensor plus your uh, 8 megapixel front pacing camera. If we go around the sides, you can see the antenna lines here, and as you can tell, the device is actually a full metal body uh, that is being used here. So they're using these antenna lines. There is no cutouts actually behind this. So this is very well made. The, uh, the quality is actually pretty much impressive on this device. It has these chamfered edges and this diamond cut that goes around the device right here. You have the volume buttons on the side here and the power button. They are made out of metal, I think. And they, well, they're not the best fitting, but they're pretty, they have a good click point to them. And yeah, it's pretty easy to reach them. They also have this texture on the power button right here. So that has a nice feeling to it. And you can actually tell it apart from the other buttons. Going further down, you get a single speaker on the right, I believe. And on the left is just a mock grill where the microphone is housed. And in the middle, you will also have your USB Type-C 
uh, port, which is a USB 2.0 port, so there's not uh, the high speeds that you would um, be able to achieve with a 3.0 port. In the middle is those two screws that actually make it a, make you able to take the device apart. Going over to the left, there's pretty much nothing there except for this dual SIM card slot where you will be able to actually put in a not only two SIM cards, but you can also, if you want to, put in a memory card to extend the storage. Let me just quickly open this and get this out so you can see it. It's on the left we have the uh, slot that doubles also as the micro SD slot. I'll just put in a T-Mobile SIM for Germany right now and there's one thing you have to remember about this device or at least the Chinese version is the fact that this only supports Chinese bands which means you get most bands actually that you would also expect to be using in Europe for example but in this case they are limited to band 1, 3, 7 and a bunch of other Chinese bands and uh, yeah band 20 which is the one that we use mostly in Germany is not supported on this device so you have to remember that if you want to buy this and you might end up skipping uh, from 3G to 4G from time to time depending on your network operator or what bands the company uses. In my case it's T-Mobile on this device right now so let me just quickly unlock this. There we have it. Uh, once it's unlocked you will be able to see up here it has 4G but that's only on this one network operator mostly slipping back to 3G because the coverage is not very good on the other bands that uh, are not band 20 actually in Germany. Yeah, going back over to this uh, to the rear here, we have the 16 megapixel camera on the back that uses one micron pixel, so they're pretty tiny pixels. You will notice that uh, when taking pictures outside, so the lighting is not very good in um, low light situations, and you will end up with quite a bit of grain there. We have the dual uh, LED flashback here. So it has those two different colors that will be adjusted to make your uh, skin look better, for example. Then we have the fingerprint reader, which is actually very quick. So let me just show you. I'm just going to lock the device and unlock it. And as you can see, it is pretty, pretty quick unlocking the device. It's almost Huawei level because Huawei always has pretty much the fastest fingerprint readers as far as I can tell. Um, the whole thing is packaged in this pretty good looking gold casing right here. The only Motorola logo on the back is the Motorola logo on the back is pretty much the only thing that you will see on the back because what they've done is they've moved most of the regulatory information over here to the side so as you can see there's a bunch of stuff mentioned there and yeah that's pretty much it the whole thing weighs in at 168 grams I believe and it is 7.85 millimeters thick so it's not the thinnest device you get the MediaTek Helio P15 in here, so that's a faster version of the uh, Helio P10, and I have been running um, a bunch of benchmarks on here, and I'll try and find my um, my scores actually, if I can only manage to. That's the the hard part about it right now. So I've run Antudo on here, and as you can see, your score just under 54,000 points on this. I've also had 55,000, so it's a typical mid-range um, result that you would expect from the Helio P15 on here. There's 4 gigs of RAM and you also have 32 gigs of internal flash storage, so let me just quickly show you how much space is still left. So you end up with around 24 gigabytes of usable storage on this device once you are all set up. Um, again, it supports AC Wi-Fi. It also has dual band support, so 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands are supported. LTE up to 300 me megabits, depending on what what bands are supported in your country. That's the most important part about this device. And uh, yeah, that uh, the Moto M is running Android 6.0 in this case. It has this modified UI on here, the Chinese UI, and the Chinese UI means there's a bunch of um, problems with translation actually you also end up with a bunch of um, apps pre-installed for example Microsoft is putting their apps pretty much front and center on this device so we have Excel PowerPoint Word Outlook and OneNote on here Cortana is not present in this case also no Skype or anything which is probably um, 
the reason for that is probably regulations in China in this case. Um, the UI is also special in the sense that, as this is a Chinese device, there is no Google software on here. I've only installed Photos so far, but other than that, there is pretty much no Google services on here. I wasn't also not I was also not able to install any Google services, which well, kind of sucks. But I hope I get a ROM from the um, United. Emirates and I hope that yeah then I will be able to actually have all the Google stuff um, supported on here we have the App Center which is basically a Chinese app store that Lenovo was pre-installing here you'll find most of the apps that you would need in here except for yeah all those Google all those Google apps because the play services are always crashing let me just quickly show you that so this is what I ended up with when trying to install the Google services or Play Store on this device. So, so far, pretty much no luck. Yeah, but, well, what am I supposed to do? There is all this typical Android stuff in here, so you get the cleaner stuff, uh, the cleaner button down here. You also have this uh, pretty much not very highly modified UI on here, so you get the quick settings up here. It's all in a pretty low DPI setting, actually, so you'll end up with pretty much um, pretty big icons and stuff you can't actually change that on here which is well not the best thing to actually happen to me because I like it when stuff is a bit smaller there's a bunch of tools pre-installed you also get these great apps what what they're calling it in a translation it's, so that's a bunch of Chinese services for example Weibo the um, mapping service right there and Alipay which is also supported before the lock screen on here so you can pay wirelessly at least when you are <clears throat> in China other than that, the UI has a bunch of different icons on here. You also get this Theme Center app, which allows you to actually change a bunch of uh, change around on the icons or switch out the uh, the look of the device or the the interface at least. It's all Chinese, so I can't pretty much do anything with it. You're not able to switch around on the buttons down here, so there's a it's a pretty limited UI in this case, at least when you're using it in the Western countries. You also get a uh, Lenovo browser on here, so there's pretty much no Google stuff on this device. But let's just quickly try and check out the camera for a second. So I have this Chuba Chips down here, so it's just my lollipop right there. What's interesting is you always have to agree to a bunch of stuff, so they pretty much granularly allow you to switch around on the UI and you'll be able to set it up pretty nicely to your liking dealing with all these uh, presets to uh, yeah give rights to the apps so they don't um, do anything without your liking and the camera is actually well in bright situations like this right now it should be pretty much okay as soon as you start going uh, a bit further down in the in the lighting actually you will end up with the device having a bunch of problems there so if you look at the pictures Yes, this is a 16 megapixel camera. I've set it to the highest resolution right now, but quality could be a bit better. Also, the colors are a bit off because as you can see, like it is has a blue tint to it, so they might be able to fix that through software. The device only has been out in China for like two weeks for I think. And um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff they definitely need to fix on here. Looking at the camera app, you can also switch to the front camera which I believe is up here, and then you will see that it has pretty prominently placed down here those beautification stuff, the typical beautification stuff that you always end up on the Chinese devices. Uh, the front-facing camera is actually pretty decent because it has this 8 megapixel sensor. Let me just quickly snap a shot right here, and we'll take a closer look at my ugly face, and yeah, you'll see. Well, it's a bit grainy as I'm in the dark right now, but it pretty much works okay. So you should be able to take some pretty decent um, selfie shots with this. So yeah, that's just been a very quick look at the Moto M, which is actually now out in China. As I said, it's launching in the United Arab Emirates pretty soon, and we'll see how that goes. They said on the Moto site that it was going to be running a Snapdragon 617 or 616, I believe. Um, but that's definitely not the case. This will also run the Helio P15 on the international version that hopefully soon will be out.
Before I forget about it, up top we have the 3.5 millimeter headset jack and your noise cancellation mic. And yeah, other than that, it's a pretty much a no frills phone that is definitely of a very high build quality. I mean, there's it's super stable. You won't be able to bend this in any way. And there's also no flex on the back, so it feels very sturdy actually. Um, one thing that I'm missing on here is a notification LED. So this device actually does not have a notification LED, at least I haven't found any settings and all the messages or notifications that I've received have not triggered any notification LED so far. So yeah, that's the one thing that is definitely missing on this device, which is the Moto M. So if you like those kinds of videos that I'm doing, trying to find a bunch of special devices from China or other countries, follow me on Twitter. It's my name basically, Roland Quant, which is R-Q-U-A-N-D-T on Twitter. Also follow me on um, YouTube and I hope you like what I do and we'll see you later.